Hey guys, so Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, all that stuff. Um, it's been a long time since last. And let me let me explain you why. Um, so, it's really cold out here, but let's see. I've gotten a new system, which is the Conix ProSight HD. Now, this is actually also the reason I haven't been making a video, because I've been so mad at this system. Um, <laughs> I got it before Christmas, and this, this whole video is going to be about that. So if you're not interested, you should probably uh, shut this off right now. So, let's see. Um, the whole deal about this system is that right now what we're flying is analog. Analog is good, everybody's flying with it because analog has a big advantage. The big advantage is that if you're flying, let's say you're flying behind that container and you get static on the screen, as you're losing your signal, you get more and more static, which means that you have an idea that the signal is going bad. So you can uh, turn around and you can go back. With a digital system, um, unfortunately, you, you can get some pixelations if the signal goes bad, but in most cases, it will probably show you some pixelation and then it will just freeze the, the image or something like that. So it's it's um, it's much, much harder to actually, something is dripping on me, what the fuck? It's actually much harder to, uh, to fly safe, I think, on this, um, because you could go from having a really good signal to just suddenly having absolutely no signal. Um, so I was a bit wary, worried about um, ordering and using the system, but I did anyways. I received it before Christmas. To make a long story short, I went out the first time, couldn't find the HDMI cable that was supposed to be included in the box because you're using an HDMI cable from the box over there to your glasses. Um, so I used one of my own. Came out here, set it up, and I flew um, about 30 seconds and then complete blank screen. No pixelation, no warnings, no nothing, just a blank screen. A black screen and I crashed um, which was annoying because one of the the only things that could make this system a no-go for me is um, if something like that happens because then you just don't trust it you don't want to fly with it you don't want to be going 140 kilometers an hour in a turn and just black or you know that would be bad um, so that that worried me a bit so I drove home I got another HDMI cable because I figured the one I picked out was three meters long. It could be the length, it could be the quality of the cable. I took another one, went out, and uh, after about 40 seconds, the same thing happened. Um, I then wrote the company I bought it from, and they said that the box does have an HDMI cable, and I have to use that one. So I looked at the box, and in this weird crease underneath where nobody's looking, there was an HDMI cable, so I'm an asshole. Um, took it, and then a few days after Christmas, Went out again, hooked it up, and I flew um, maybe a minute, and then suddenly black screen again. And at that point, I was up in the air over there, and um, there's a field below with like, you, you know, you never find your quad if it goes down there. So it just went black, took off my screen, uh, my goggles, and I had to manually uh, fly it back. So at this point, I was really frustrated because I, I didn't want to use the system. Um, and uh, I wrote back and forth, and after a lot of writing back and forth with them, it turns out that they have, and they haven't mentioned this in their manual, which is stupid, because I went online on Google and searched for, you know, people having similar problems like, like me, but I couldn't find any, which, <laughs> when that happens, you know that you're doing something wrong, and it's, it's not the system. Um, it turns out, when you turn on the box over there, and you turn on your quad and everything, it has to look for a stable signal, and this can take up to 75 seconds. So, in the process of doing so, it's actually going blank once in a while. Um, so, you know, I, I had gotten into the habit of just plugging stuff together and uh, just taking off. And so, yeah. So now I'm out here again today. Uh, hope it works, but I'm gonna plug it in. Leave it for about two minutes because I wanna be safe. And then I'm going to take off, and, and we'll see what this system does, and I'll give you my honest opinion of it. However, so far I have been testing a little bit, and I'm, I'm just really hoping this actually works. Because, you know, this is a really stupid area, there's nothing to fly by. Um, so it's going to be a boring video in that sense. But there's that one tree I usually fly around, and with the HD system, I can see all the branches on it. With my normal system, I can't see the branches. So I, I do think this has a, a big potential. Um, so yeah, this is the body quad. quad. Um, 
let's get in the air and just to fly a little bit. It's gonna fly a little bit slow in the beginning and then take it further and further away and we'll see what happens. test so um, yeah I don't know how long I waited I'm guessing I waited about a minute um, maybe a little bit longer I'm hoping so at least but uh, yeah went around the tree completely blacked out I could see it beginning to come back beginning to look like it's finding itself and that's bullshit to be honest that's really just bullshit I mean if this system is so fragile if this system needs so much warm-up time why the fuck doesn't it say so in the manual? I mean, that's ridiculous. I'm gonna try once more. I need to change two props. I'm gonna try once more, give it two minutes on a cold boot. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna demand my money back. Uh, even if it works, I'm still like warming up for one and a half minutes. That's a long time. That's a stupid ass long time for a system. Well, let's see. Okay, so just change the props, all facing the right way, that's correct. Gonna hook this thing up now, just gonna do it while I have you here. Let's see, come on, come on, there we go, that's hooked up right there. Gonna look at the time, and we're gonna set this thing down and hook it up, and then we'll give the whole thing two minutes before we take it off. Let's try that. Just to be safe, we're at 2 minutes and 43 seconds now. I'm gonna put the whole thing on and fly, and if this doesn't work, well, you know. So I'm sorry about this long video, but I want to do this in all in one cut because one of the things they asked me about um, with this system was they asked me to film, you know, from uh, from the camera's HD feed so they could see what was happening. But as I told them, I can't do that because on the Fat Sharks you cannot record the HD output um, because you have an HDMI in for the glasses. And I don't have a DVR for it, because the DVR for this one has to be a special DVR. You can't just buy something that all of us already have, which is... The, me, this is pissing me off. Um, the small black screens we all have, or well, a lot of us have, where you put an SD card in and record, you can do that normally, but this system here is its own protocol goes through an HDMI cable into the Fat Sharks, which means that on my TBS Tango, I'm not able to record this or even uh, get it. On my Fat Sharks, I'm not able to record. Okay, so this is one of those days where everything goes wrong. Um, 
yeah, this, this is ridiculous. Now, as I was saying, um, when I asked the guys I've bought it from, uh, which is Globe Flight in Germany, when I asked them about this system, uh, you know, and told them about the problems I had, they contacted ProSight, who in turn said that I had to record the, uh, the live feed. I can't record the live feed because it, I need like a hundred euro or a hundred US dollar thing to put in the loop between the their box and my glasses in order to record this. I'm not going to spend that kind of money because I wouldn't. I won't be using that system for anything else, uh, which is ridiculous that they're asking me for it. But on the other hand, I, I don't. I don't know. They're also asking me if I can send the whole system back. But the thing about this system is. There's no way in hell that I'm gonna be using this now because I waited two minutes and 40 seconds. You know, um, when I put in my VTX, my normal VTX, no matter what brand it is, I can fly. On some I get better range, better reception, better, better, um, you know, penetration. Um, on this one, I don't know, I just get frustration. I mean, I was flying, I'm standing right here, and I was flying over to that tree over there, which is what? Was it 15 meters away? And yeah, these two are online. And yes, there's a house there, but it's not actually blocking. But this shouldn't be a problem. This is really normal. This is a normal scenario for anybody. Uh, so, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And regarding the quality and everything in this, um, now I know I said that it's, it, it's well worth it and I'm hoping that it's, it's gonna work because I really want to use the system and in some some part of me still do because stuff like the Sun like for instance we have the Sun up there which you guys probably know um, with a normal camera it can wash out stuff it can get darker and everything on this system that was actually brilliant I could basically fly towards the Sun without anything happening um, I feel I can see definition much more I can see all these branches here when I'm up in the air and you have like two options on the pro side. You have the HD, which is only 30 FPS and has a little bit of lag. You can fly with it, but it's not really good. It's good for filming maybe. Um, and it's very, um, it, it looks very good. It has a, a really nice quality too. Then you can switch into high performance mode, which I didn't really care for. It, it, it didn't have that much latency. I actually it didn't feel like it had any latency. So that was the good part of it. Um, but the issue was that the quality was, you know, kind of the same as the VTX, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit better in lighting uh, conditions and stuff like that. So what I actually did is I bought the H plus lens, which is another lens you can screw into the camera, which costs like 30 euros. And when you're using this lens, you can go into an H plus mo mode, which is a mixture between uh, high quality and high performance mode. Um, and that's the one I'm flying with now. It also gives a little bit more zoomed view, kind of. Um, and to be honest, I didn't like it that much. It's good, it gives okay quality, but it kind of seems like everything is pearly, you know? There's, um, yeah, I, I don't know, everything is just a little bit pearly in a way. It's, it's just a little bit, not fussy. It's both fussy and sharp at the same time, I don't know. <sighs> Too bad. Long story short, I regret this purchase. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty tech guy. I can, I can figure most things out. And I bet that there's something with this that I could have done differently. But if you look at it, let me show you this if you can. See this? If you look at what I've actually done here, it's quite nicely integrated. There's, there's like n nothing really bad with it. It's um, basically, you've got the camera down here, which is seated properly. You've got the, um, the transmitter thing in here, which is also seated properly. It even has a layer of foam underneath it. And it's not touching anything on the top. All the wires are set in a way so that they don't bend. Um, the antenna is actually in the correct angle. Um, everything is just right. So I will be returning it. Um, and it's a shame. I, I was hoping that this would be the next big thing. And I'm guessing for some it is, and I've, I've, I, as I said, I cannot find anybody else online who has the same problem as me. Um, or the fact is that a lot of people have these problems, and they shut up about it, and they resell the system. I don't know. But for me, it's not working. And I'm not exactly in a very Wi-Fi, you know, saturated area. There's nothing out here creating interference. 
So there's absolutely no reason why this, this shouldn't work good. Uh, and we're not talking about losing a signal at 150 meters out behind something. We're talking about losing the signal at about 20 meters out. And this is even when I put this whole thing here in 200 uh, milliwatt mode, because standard in the EU, it goes 25 milliwatts. Um, it's on the auto frequencies, which means that everything is automatic. It should find the best frequency. And again, you know, maybe I could do it with setting a fixed frequency. But to be honest, that's not why I bought the system. I don't want to be scanning the area and finding the right frequency. I just want to fly. So if the system says it's auto, it's got to be auto, you know? So anyway, sorry about the rant. Um, and I hope that this video will balance out a lot of these. Oh my God. Oh my God. This system is so good because no, it's not. It has potential. It has a clearly good idea and it will work for some people and maybe even in a race setting where you can control a lot of the factors. But for people just wanting to go out and fly and just hook it up and just take off and have some fun, no, just no. I mean, seriously. Anyways, have fun. Thank you and have a nice weekend.